Oh, love you guys so much. So it, it's just cool to feel like this isn't just some arbitrary random video of like who's gonna watch, but that it's us watching, it's us interacting, it's us engaging, it's those of us that are united and um, united and just loving God and trying to love others. And including in that, like one of the things that struck me this morning was just having some conversation with some friends yesterday and thinking about that we're called to love our neighbor as ourself. And so there's two things right there. One, when it says we're called to love our neighbor, I think sometimes I get overwhelmed by I'm supposed to love everybody. And in one essence, yes, I'm to love everybody, but I can't love everybody. Meaning like I'm not, sometimes I think I let things that are going on in other parts of the world and other parts of the country and other parts of even our city I get enamored with them, whether it's through the news I watch or the social media feeds or conversations that I have. And so I feel this like, well, man, can you believe what's going on over there? And it keeps me from being present right here with my actual neighbors. I think it's interesting because the way I've always heard Jesus say that, the way I've always read the Bible is that I'm to love everybody as myself. Well, Jesus says, love your neighbor, meaning the person nearest to you, the person across maybe the bed from you, maybe it's across the dining room table from you, maybe it's across the street from you or across the cubicle from you. And he says in that, 1 John 3 tells us the word of love and deed and truth, meaning don't just say you do it, do it. So that's one aspect, but the second aspect of that is I think one of the barometers of how we're able to love others is are we loving them in order to get love ourselves or are we loving them from a position of being loved? Because it says, love your neighbor as yourself. What I found is, is the times that I've been most joyful, the times I felt most able to give encouragement and approval, the times I felt most able to love others are when I know how much God loves me. And so I'm not seeking to be loved, I'm coming from a place of love. That it's not that I want to be someone who does loving acts, but I want to be a loving person. I want and pray this often that I want everyone who comes in contact with me to feel the love of Christ. Well, the only way they can feel that is if it's like Psalm 23 says that my cup overfloweth, that I'm so um, enamored and knowing with God and that he loves me, that he wants to be with me right where I'm at, right how I'm at. Because even that, I think sometimes I read and think, Love your neighbor as you wish you will be in the future. Well, Lynn has a saying with our kids I absolutely love. You are the oldest you've ever been today. You know the most you've ever known today. You are as wise as you've ever been today. And so with that, there's a level of grace of just admitting I don't know it all. And in that, I want to be aware that I don't know what I don't know. But I also want to be present to what I do know about God and about myself. I want to bring my full self to the table that that's actually what confession is. It's not a list of here's how wrong I am and all these things. It's God, this is what I know of me. Can you search me and know me? Can you help me see myself better? Can you help me see myself in light of your love and grace? Can you help me understand your plan for me, your will for me, your desire for me, but more importantly, your love for me? And then from there, it's like, it's as if, did you ever have those experience? I remember the first time that Lynn and I, I'm just going to let you in. First time I ever had a kiss with Lynn, I came back to my dorm, threw open the doors, put my hands up in the air. You could have told me anything that night. And I would have been like, cool, don't care. I want to have that, be that type of person all day, every day, because I'm present with Jesus. I'm understanding him i'm hearing him that it may be described of me like it is in acts 2 of paul and james that they were common or uh, peter and james that they were common uneducated men but men who had been with jesus and so today friend make that the goal that you press on towards is knowing how much god loves you and in turn we love because he first loved us God, I, I am a harsh inner critic. My heart is deceitfully wicked and it's prone to hear criticism of others. It's prone to rejoice in others' brokenness and somehow feel like that somehow alleviates my brokenness. 
but Father, I desire to be just whole in your presence and to be whole in your presence starts with admitting that I'm broken, that I struggle to see myself as you see me, that I whisper deep, hurtful lies to myself. And so Father, I pray that I would replace those with grace and truth, truth of who you are, truth of what you say about me, I would come to understand more and more the grace you've shown me and in turn, God, that everything that flows out of my life, that I would begin to see that as it flows out of my relationship with you. That maybe the reason why I've been struggling with anxiety or bitterness or frustration or I've had that tone in my voice is because I've just become more and more distant from you, more and more numb. And God, I just, I pray today that I would enter your sanctuary, that I would bask in your presence, that I would slow down enough to hear you, to think about you. And God, I pray that I wouldn't move unless you move. And so God, help me to see those around me in the same way and with the same grace. To lavish on them love regardless of an agenda and regardless of a response. Because God, you so loved the world that you sent your son, that you first loved us. And in that you say, I love you. God, I pray that I and I collectively with our church and with our friends, with our family would say back, I love you too. And it's in your son's name that I pray. Amen. Love you guys. Praying for you. Pray for me. Shoot me prayer requests. Shoot me um, ways I can maybe even be praying and praising God for things he's doing in your life. So excited to get together on Sunday. One thing I will say, if you could be praying for me and for the Harford family today, today is our celebration of Karen's life. She went to be with the Lord last week. And um, it's hard to go to a funeral because there's something to grieve that's been lost. But there's also just the excitement of writing an appreciation, a celebration of her life was so easy because of the type of relationship she had with Jesus and in turn the type of love she showed people. So please be praying for me and for the Hartfords as well. Love you guys. Praying for you. Pray for me.